Hey everybody, welcome to my Resident Evil Code Veronica X review. Uh, I just finished playing this game just a couple weeks ago, and I played it. Uh, I played the HD remastered version on the Xbox One. Um, I had the game for a while, but I had some free time, so I decided to give it, give it a go, right? So anyways, let's start with the easiest part to talk about, the graphics. Um, the graphics, I would say, are aged, obviously. This is a Dreamcast game from the year 2000, there's no doubt about it. They're very aged, they're blocky, the animations are choppy, but can you play the game still? Yeah, you definitely can. You can. They're not as aged as the PS1 games where it's just a bunch of blocks with textures on them. No, this game, the graphics actually, the models have actually lips modeled, eyes built in. You can actually tell it's a human instead of a bunch of polygons and blocks. But what I found was disappointing was that in the HD remaster, Capcom barely put any effort. All they did was just up the resolution to 720p and uh, gave you a 16 by 9 uh, uh, widescreen aspect ratio. And that's about it. They didn't bother giving you better textures, HD textures, increasing the polygon count of the game. So it's just a missed opportunity for the company if you ask me. Could I made the game, be game better? But as is, you can still play it. As is charms, the graphics are nice. Um, what I like about the graphics is that, that they don't use the pre-rendered backgrounds from the prior game instead they have a fully rendered graphics is is rendered for real time so in my in my opinion i like that style better there's more color it just gives a better feel to the game a better atmosphere and i like that they still they still hold up yeah they they look old like i said but it's playable it could be better definitely especially with what they released but hey if you're set if you set your mind to it you can play it no problem but that's the graphics. Now let's move on with the setting and the music. Um, the setting, I like the setting a lot. I thought it was highly atmospheric. It takes place on an island and you got a bunch of places you can see on this island. You got your typical Resident Evil style mansion palace. You have a private residence. You have a military training facility. You have an underground lab. You have a prison. There's a lot of places to visit in this game and by far this game is probably the largest classic RE game. You're probably going to get around 10 to 11 hours of uh, gameplay time in this game which I think is an absolute plus because if you look back to the other RE games you have to play as two different characters that pretty much repeat the same game so I would say the previous RE games before this were like five to six hours so double the length I like that and also I love the music in this game I I found out about this game when I clicked on a playthrough of it on YouTube a few years ago and the guy who was playing it went into the save room I was like wow that sounds incredible I liked that and just got me hooked into the game. It was, in, it was in the back of my mind or my backlog, as you would say, right? And I think the music is fantastic. There's a bunch of tracks. They all fit the atmosphere, the setting very well. It gives you a B-movie type feel, B-movie horror. I just absolutely enjoy that. I love it. It's great. There's no doubt about that. Anyways, now, now to the bad part. What I thought the bad part was, let, I have to lump the gameplay and the controls together, people. I'm sorry, they're just too linked together. I don't like doing this, but I have to. Why I didn't, why I didn't like about it is, what I didn't like about it is the tank controls. The tank controls absolutely ruined the game for me. Why do we have this clunky movement system? I mean, this is a fixed camera game. You don't need, you don't need two thumbsticks, one to control the camera, one to move the player. So why couldn't Capcom just? have the analog stick to move the character in any direction you want. Why do we need this weird tank controls? It it just makes the game just much worse. It just hurts the game if you ask me because the game is incredible. The atmosphere, the setting, the music, the characters, the story. I thought it was very well done. Um, but I just, the controls, they break the game. Especially not only that, the controls just make the game cheap. Especially especially if you add on this, this is one of the hardest RE games you can play. The amount of ammo, the amount of health supplies, the amount of save save tapes they give you is a lot less compared to previous games. And the enemy placement and the enemies respawn. You put this together with the tank controls, you just get a really difficult, cheap, cheap, cheaply difficult game. It's not challenging, it's just difficult in a bad way, not in a good way. And in a game like this with classic RE games, you want to you you, you do trial and error gameplay. You want to explore, you want to see what you can do with the puzzles. You want to figure things out, but in this game, you don't get time because you got to conserve your ammo. You got to watch what you're doing. I know they want to emphasize the survival horror aspect, but really, guys, who's scared of Resident Evil at this point? 
nah, I just want to explore the setting, I want to solve the puzzles, I want to read the memos, yeah, I want to shoot some zombies. I mean, they have a lot of weapon variety in this game too. You get, you got your uh, shotgun, you got your assault rifle, you got your sniper, you got your dual dual pistols or dual rifles. And they're great to use, but hey, you gotta conserve your ammo. I just, I just can't play around with the game. You get what I mean? I mean, they're not. It's a nice game, but you can't really mess around, and I just don't like that. And there's a lot of bad design design decisions. For example, there's numerous boss fights in this game. And some of the bosses, they, bosses, they require you have a certain ammo ammo type to beat them. And if, it, for example, you use this ammo type previously in the game, you don't have it. You're pretty much screwed at the boss fights. So either you revert, you reverse back to a save file where you had that ammo type. And if you don't have that ammo type, you're screwed. You start the game over again. And this really may, harms the game, in my opinion. And there's another bad design decision later on in the game where you play as both as Chris and Claire. There's a situation where you switch from Claire to Chris and you're immediately thrown into a boss fight without being able to choose your ammo, your gun, you're not able to use a lockbox. So you're pretty much screwed again, you gotta go back an hour to your previous save file and do it again and just prepare for that. So I mean, what were they thinking with the design decisions? And that's a shame because I like this game, I like the setting, I like the fixed camera RE gameplay. I played the other ones, I played Zero. I played one, uh, the HD versions with the better controls, right? and I really enjoyed this immensely. Not that I didn't enjoy this game, I didn't enjoy this game, but the artificial difficulty and the tank controls kind of ruined it for me. So do I recommend this game in 2020? Yeah, I recommend it, especially if you're an RE fan. And all the other Resident Evil games, they're available so on, on PC and modern consoles, so you can get the story. The only one that's missing in terms of story-wise is this game, right? So you got your options to play it either on Xbox One, backwards compatibility with the HD version, or you have to use emulators, or you could play it on the PS4, or you could play the PS2 version, but let's be honest, play the HD version so you can play in 16x9 mode on modern TVs, that's the version you want to play, right? Anyway, I would give it a, I would give it a 6 out of 10, it's a great game, but once again, it's ruined by the artificial cheap difficulty and the tank controls, otherwise I loved it, I liked it. It was like a great. It was like playing a uh, B movie, B horror movie, right? So you don't get those two. You don't get those these days anymore. But anyways, yeah, a six out of ten. All right, thanks. Thanks for listening to me, guys. Take care. Bye.